we tend to see them not just the people whose figure in history books Adams Jefferson Thomas Paine Benjamin Rush and of course Washington we tend to see them as sort of figures in a costume pageant it's often the way they're portrayed and we tend to see them as much older than they were because we're seeing them in the portraits of Gilbert Stuart and others when they were truly the founding fathers and furthermore none of them had had any prior experience in revolutions they weren't experienced revolutionaries who'd flown in to take part in this biggest of all events they were winging it they were improvising at the time of the revolution they were all young it was a young man's young woman's cause George Washington took command of the Continental Army in the summer of 1775 at the age of 43 he was the oldest of them Adams was 40 Jefferson was all of 33 when he wrote the Declaration of Independence and he wasn't chosen by his fellow members of the Continental Congress because he was a great military person he was chosen because they knew him they knew the kind of man he was they knew his character his integrity what Washington was above all was a leader he was a man people would follow and as events would prove he was a man whom some a few would follow through hell and he would not give up he would not quit the army was totally demoralized they'd been defeated they were soaking wet they were cold they were hungry and by the time Washington started his big retreat his long retreat across New Jersey they were down to only a few thousand men that's all well Washington took stock just as the British Army was taking stock of what the situation was and most every officer and all the politicians many of whom had fled from Philadelphia by this time and most everybody concluded that the war was over and we had lost it it was the only rational conclusion one could come to there wasn't a chance so Washington did what you sometimes have to do when everything's lost and all hopes gone he attacked they went up the river Christmas night nine miles up to McConkie's Ferry they crossed the Delaware he had the nerve the courage the faith in the cause to carry the war once more to the enemy and they marched nine miles back down the river on the eastern side and struck at Trenton the next morning it was a fierce house-to-house -house savage battle small in scale but very very severe and it was all over in about 45 minutes and we won for the first time now it wasn't a great battle like Brooklyn this was a small engagement but its consequences were enormous beyond reckoning because of the psychological effect it transformed the attitude of the army and of much of the country toward the war and in that it was a pivotal turning point Washington the political general had never forgotten that Congress was boss when the war was at last over Washington in one of the most important events in our entire history turned back his command to the Congress no conquering general had done that before when George the third heard that George Washington might do this King George the third said if he does that he will be the greatest man in the world so what does it tell us it tells us that the original the original decision the Continental Congress was the wise one they knew the man they knew his character and he lived up to his reputation 